Good morning. I'm going to start it off today, uh, day 13 for our manifesting challenge. And I was reflecting on, you know, how we get off track. How do we get our life off the rails? Well, there's usually two things that happen. Our life goes off the rails by one, a sudden, unexpected, or tragic event in our life, or two, we have made a series of small, negative, tiny decisions that are not in alignment with who we are. And all of those tiny little decisions end up taking us down a different path, a different direction. And the good news is, is this, we can get back on track we can live our dreams, we can fulfill our goals, we can be the person that we've always thought we could be or want to be, and follow that inner calling deep within ourselves in the exact same way. By focusing on the little things that will take you exactly to where and what you want. You see, we underestimate, now I did too, the power of the compounding effect, the ripple effect of focusing on the right things. You see, what we all do is we focus on the big stuff, when in effect, it's focusing on the little things that are everything. So this morning when I was waking up, honestly, I didn't want to go for that walk that I committed to. I didn't want to get dressed and I just want to lay in bed and have some coffee and sit back and sort of take things in a little bit. And I went in, in my mind, I said, no, I committed to walking every single day for the summer. And I oh, and past the summer, but I'm, this is a manifesting challenge. So I'm still committed to it. And I'm committed to being here for, with you guys, whoever shows up here, because I know you have questions about maybe what you're focusing on or getting clear about your one incredible thing, or maybe how things are going off the rails. So I decided, no, I'm going to be here. I'm going to be here no matter who shows up and hopefully bring some inspiration for you. And, um, and, and it's a push for me. It's a, it's a test for me of my leadership, of my commitment to myself, to my one incredible thing that I'm focusing on the little things, the little things that add up my practice of coming live or being here with you full front and center and, and speaking on the fly. You know, it's not my favorite thing to do, even though when people know me, they're like, oh, you, you don't like talking. <laughs> you talk well. So so I'm, I'm sharing that with you because that's the honest to God truth. And I realize that a lot of people in, in a lot of my sessions, what we focus on is the resistance. Like, what is it? Not only our negative self-talk, but the resistance. It's an, an invisible energy that's blocking us from pushing through one our, and holding our discipline, our self-discipline. Why can't we stay on track? Why can't we fulfill our commitments to ourselves? Why can't we do the things that we said we were going to do? And I describe that energy as a, as a resistance, as an energy block. As some, it could be a decision you made when you were a kid. It could be something that someone told you you were never going to amount to anything. So that pattern just keeps repeating way back in your subconscious. You're not recognizing it's there, but that is the resistance that's setting you up for a, a defaultive negative, ne negative situation. And so um, yeah, I don't know what, what was going on there with my phone. Um, so that's where I wanted to talk today about the resistance to acknowledge the resistance, you know, in the practices that I shared with you on the manifesting challenge, you know, the very first day we start clearing energies, we, we clear the resistances, that's what blocks are. They create resistance, they derail us, they impede the natural flow and our own connection to being aligned with the truth of who we are. And when we say we want one thing, but we end up doing another, you know, all the personal development and, and your therapists and coaches, and they will say, well, why didn't you do that? You know, what is it? What's wrong with you, numbskull? <laughs> 
And so there's nothing wrong with us when we do that, but it's a good check-in when you recognize that's happening to then say, okay, I need some guidance with this. I need some support with this because this is a pattern that can, continues to show itself to uh, myself and the world. And it's not, it's not an effective, uh, helpful thing that I want to continue living with. So that's the first thing that we're doing in, in clearing in the first day of our practice. And then we go on to having clarity. Well, guess what? If you can't achieve clarity, if there's friction or interference or the way you're seeing the world has been programmed, your perspective. So that's the reason behind our second exercise. And so I could go on and on, but today I think suffice it to, uh, it's, it's sufficient to just speak about where are we noticing we get stuck? Where are we noticing resistance to take the next step? We might say, oh, I'm afraid. I'm afraid to speak publicly like I'm doing with you. I'm afraid to go live. I'm afraid to, I had a client that was all of a sudden developed a fear of driving on the freeway. Um, I have clients that are afraid to make a call to somebody or even how about apologize? We're afraid to apologize or we're afraid to try something different. You know, why not? You know, I did something different. I got a new pillow today. Yeah, I, I put on something that I wore from a long time ago just because I hadn't worn it in a long time. That's different. Okay, so um, I got up earlier and I hit the hit the pavement. And in spite of my resistance, I, that was different for me. So those are ways that we can direct our thoughts and push ourselves through the, the obstacles, the interference, and the setbacks, okay? The self-doubt, the self-talk, the, the fear, yeah. So that's where I'm going to leave it today. I'm going to open the, um, the conversation to anybody that would like to add to that or make a comment or ask me a question. Let's go. Karen. You have something Hi, to say Brad, to thank, yeah, thank you for that. That was um, very insightful. Um, definitely was. Um, and thank you so much for, you know, what is it? Did you say this day 13 already? Yes. Well, I'm going to do 22 days live. So I will remain live for you every day till the 30th. So it's an opportunity for people to come in and, you know, have some clarity about what, where they're derailing, perhaps where they're stuck. <laughs> It is, it is really true. So you know that I took a staycation in order to write my first draft of my manuscript and my children's book. But then there was something that happened in our little neighborhoods and wild bobcats. And so all of a sudden I got into, you know, that gear of community building and engagement, letting people know, spreading the word, going on the Facebook neighborhood group, you know, telling the property management group. And pretty soon a whole day had passed while I was alerting neighbors for their small animals or right so and also educating them how to live with the bobcat from florida fish and wildlife now all those hours i sat there and i go well that was quite a trade-off and i also did something community driven the next day and i go okay that was a trade-off but was it a good trade-off i put well, my aside did something that was you know and so i sat there and found hmm, i'll have to ask amir about this <laughs> well, you know, I really appreciate you sharing that because here's the thing. I'm all for an advocate for helping everybody, right? That's why I'm here. And, um, and, and so we, we typically put ourselves last and we put ourselves, we put everybody else's needs ahead. So what you were doing energetically is solving other people's problems. And so one of the tools that I teach my students in, in, our, in my mentoring is determining, is this your problem? So on one hand, sending out one alert to perhaps one neighbor or putting it on next door might have been sufficient. You know, and again, there's no judgment on this. It's purely speculation of it's an afterthought anyway, right? But in, in retraining yourself, when something else comes up like that, you know, you can take a step and be the good neighbor, but where do you draw the line? And then, and really have that boundary set for yourself. No, I've got my writing time. That is my number one priority. This is my one incredible thing. So 
yeah, you, you lost a lot of valuable energy, time, and really that those, those areas where we get sucked into are depleting our energy. So then you lost focus, you lost your momentum. So yeah, I, I get it. And, and it's okay. happened to me like, too. I, yeah, but, I love like that because it's like, okay, let's do a little analysis here. Let's do the Toyota way and see the, the efficiency of the energy. Because right. well, I was so exhausted by the end. I went, oh, I didn't write my book and I was on such a high. And you're uh -huh. right, it's nurture because I can do it because I am that nonprofit woman who educated and nurtured right. and right so it was really hard not to do it I so even, you know right around to to make sure if anybody had little dogs they were walking that they understood what was happening not to be worried but I know it was like yeah over the top a little over but, the top but, <laughs> but in a way it's really interfering so there's a couple things here and and bear with me because yeah. thinking through this whole process is where are we interfering in somebody's life lesson Right. And so, you know, maybe they needed to learn to be responsible by not letting their dog out in the yard. Maybe, unfortunately, sometimes that's how we have to learn is through tragedy, through our loss or through our other setbacks. So one, it's learning to draw the line to deciding, is this my problem? And then three, you know, letting somebody else learn their lesson. You did your part and now pull back right? That would be an example. But let's look at this. Let's use a rose. This is one of the tools that I teach my students, all right, in more of the advanced work. So let's just close our eyes and look at a rose or any symbol. But I like a rose because it's a symbol that I can repeat. And it's a consistent symbol and everybody around the globe knows what a rose is. So if I look at a rose and look at that issue, okay, that issue if there's coyotes is oh bobcat bobcat in the neighborhood is this my problem and i'm asking the roads in my mind is this my problem to alert others and if you look at the rose what do you see the rose do karen well i would phrase it with and i love the fact that you're going to do this i was actually going to ask if you could do if there was time a couple little uh, exercises like you're doing right now for everyone um and yes first of all i would probably say is this my service to do this and yes and so what okay. is the okay what, that's great yeah. so let's start yeah. with that Let, is this yeah. your service to do this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and what does the rose do it opens up slightly, and um, I believe that, yes, something, but maybe not as much. <laughs> great, 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 great. That's a great answer. So, so note to self, okay, I butted in. Perhaps I went too far. I lost myself. I butted in. And so there you get to pull back. You can go, okay, this is, let's say, 20% of my problem because my dog would be affected also, also right? And so, and we're always affected when we have the pain of our neighbors, right? So all of us empaths are like bleeding hearts. So that's great. So that's learning personal boundaries, energetic boundaries. You know, there's a psychic level of ethics. When you start to raise your awareness to the world around you, we're all stepping in each other's space un, un, unbeknownst to us we don't know that we're really affecting them when if we're so truly um in alignment with being and doing good for others then we would not step in their energy field because we would understand that hurts them okay this would be a really good uh yeah go ahead and then I have so really so when let's let's take this further this exercise let's look at so you got your answer perfect okay, okay. so let's let that rose dissolve and now let's look at another rose uh what was what did i say now i kind of lost track here um you mean when the rose presents itself to me yeah is this my that's my you you perfect. said you, you said, said is this my service and what yeah. did i add on to that well you had first said is this my problem or my business kind of that kind of thing about okay. it I, I like the way way you yeah. served it. you know i think that's sufficient i don't think we need to look at it any further unless you have another question on that no no it leads to a, a broader question which a lot of people ask but we'll wait till we're finished so you uh, got your answer that did. that that's quick. right 
and, and now you know there's, no, there's no second guessing. You don't need to go see a therapist. You don't no. need to talk to 50 friends. You no. don't need to go see, because when we keep talking about the situation, not only do we anchor and, you know, embed, you know, what I, I, I let myself down. Oh shit. You know, and then we feel guilty that we didn't do our thing, right. That we promised ourselves that we would do. So it only perpetuates that energy of feeling bad. But when we take our power back by looking at this symbol, you get your answer like that. And there's, I didn't tell you, I didn't give you your answer. You got to make your own decision. That's empowering. And, and I, I, got love chill, I got chills yeah. saying that. Yeah. yeah. You introduced me to the rose about uh, four years ago, and it was a sticky rose. What was interesting is this time you allowed me to do what you know, whatever the rose looked like. So mine was a hot, kind of more of the hot pink um, a rose, and um, and I do I do love that because I watched what happened, and it was like watch out for. And just a couple little petals at the bottom were starting to turn brown on the hands and dropping. Oh, and, and there you go. When they start to turn brown, that's an indicator there's something off. Now, do we have to? <laughs> dive deep and, and and super analyze what's off we might get an instant oh you know it's uh, my mother's guilt or oh you know I should do this or good people do this or a good mother does this whatever the message is then you got your answer and then that image of that memory or that thought pattern well you're learning tools of what you can do with that right you can put that idea or thought in a bubble and explode it you can throw it down your grounding cord you get to direct that thought in another way that will be beneficial to you rather than just stuffing it down or ignoring it or you know denying it well what i love most about working with you amir for other people who maybe have it is yeah some of the imagery you use but also in the different tools that you've done over the years with me um and and i know and I know all the answers are within. We just have to be quiet. So that tool just opened it up. And it was that the the rose just opened a little bit, but then it was if you continue, like, you know, this could happen. And it showed me that. Now, one of the interesting things that a lot of people have a question about, one of the things I do, because I am like that, I mean, uh, that I am like that um Joan of Arc writing into battle, going, okay, I know what to do. I was always one of those grassroots community people who would say at the school level, you know, it, it grew into a nonprofit for children because I said, okay, what's the idea? What's the problem? What do you think we should do about it, kids or students? Okay, well, let's do it then. I have the can do energy and interest and fervor and all that. But at this time of my life, I'm trying to pull back a little bit, still rebuilding my community where I am. But here's a question for you. Um, well, if I could just add one thing, Karen, yeah. Um, yeah, you're reframing your life. And mm -hmm. so you are the leader of yourself and you, you led people in, impeccably. However, when we get to a life, a, a crossroads in our life and the kids are gone and it's time for you to think of you, you've got such deep programs of putting everybody else first that it's really a big you know, it's going to take some time to get those wheels turning in a new direction. Focus, well, you, sure. you know, focus on what, you know, and so it's retraining your brain, retraining your patterns. And you caught yourself yesterday. That was fantastic. In a short amount of time, you can recorrect because you caught it. Okay. Right. And like, don't, don't sit there and mull over it because that just yeah. adds that. Yeah, just get over it. Get over learn. yourself. <laughs> You're like a, a little toy. You wait right after rose and then boom okay i'm ready to move on and and refresh that energy and a lot of times it is difficult when you see something where you know you can help let's just go to india okay it's the perfect example they're all saying up oh, He's living that journey. I'm not going to reach over and give him a glass of water, even though he's dying or that animal or right. It gets, it gets into this balance of when do you reach out? Like you, if your heart is telling you, you know, oh, the animal's dying or whatever, you know, but it's suffering. Okay. So you have to listen to your heart. And for people like us, 
who are very empathetic. There's a lot of love in there. You know, just imagine the Supreme Being, how much love he has if we have this much love overflowing. Um, and so it is always that balance of when to step in because I asked myself, wait, um, I said I'd, I'd write my books in my uh, 60s. I'm there. So let's start to segue in. And, and definitely this program has helped me focus on that. So thank you very much. You're so welcome. You know, you, you brought up something that I, I very rarely talk about and for a good reason, um, but I'm going to be, sh I'm going to share it. Um, I, I have all, I've been helping people for a long time. And as a healer, somebody reached out to me. I was living in San Diego. I think it was about 2006. It was before the economic crash. And this person reached out to me and they were in serious trouble. I could see the energy of they were on death's doorstep you know, serious issues. And they were definitely, they told me a story of being an orphan, being um, from another country and having no friends or family in the San Diego area. Well, that touched on every aspect of my own journey and my own experience. So yes, it yanked at my heart. So this person had reached out to me at a professional level and she was in my area. So psychically, I could see she needed nourishment desperately, okay? So I made a big pot of my healing. It's Jordan Rubin's healing chicken soup that I swear about that. I always keep some in my freezer. I know uh, that right. For, yeah, it's an old <laughs> recipe, but it, it you cook it for 24 hours and it's amazing. So anyway, I had made this big pot for her. I loaded my car. I put that big old pot of soup in the car and I drove it. I found her address and I drove it to her place, knocked on the door with this big pot of soup and she was shocked. And so was I, because in front of me was a skin and bones anorexic woman. Now, I didn't know what anorexia was. I mean, I had seen a person walking down, but I had no clue. I had no reference to it. Okay. My heart was bleeding for this person. Okay. And I did what I thought and, you know, my Canadian upbringing, when somebody was struggling, a neighbor died or something happened, we always did something like that. We extended ourselves. So that was my old pattern, right? So the story gets good because what happened was over time, um, I helped her, I think she got admitted to the hospital. There was something going on in the hospital. They nicked her colon. So I remember not being able to get there, but my friend, I enrolled a friend that went to see her. And of course, you know, witnessed some, some real horrible things that were going on. They couldn't find a vein and blood was splashing all over the room. And because this girl was so, so thin, right? Everything, everything they did became an issue. So the surgery they had done on her, they nicked her colon, right? So now she had a bigger problem. So anyway, we got her better. We got her out of the hospital, but she couldn't go home and her apartment was up, you know, a flight of stairs. So I took it upon myself to close up her apartment and move her in to my spare bedroom. I has, I was a jewelry designer at the time. I took down my studio. I remade a bedroom for her and, and moved all her stuff in storage for her. So, cause she was going to be on a long recovery. There was no way that girl was going to go up and down stairs, but it was none of my business. <laughs> so anyway, um, that's what I did. And I nursed her back to some sense of health until I started witnessing the smoothies because her digestion and because I knew she was anorexic and she was so nutritionally deficient, I was making green smoothies and all the health things that I knew, the bone broth and to build her system up, right? But I didn't get that she had a mental illness around her well-being, okay? And so that part of it I missed because I was so hell-bent on getting this girl back to the living, okay? And um, so I was making smoothies and the bone broth and the soup. I caught her throwing it out. Oh, boy. It to me. Yeah. I actually saw in the hospital because I brought her green smoothies and, and healthy smoothies, protein drinks, and I caught her pitching it out when I was walking in the room. 
And so those little things started to, you know, add up. And then I, um, she started telling lies. She started telling friends of friends and other people that were my sport support group that I was beating her, that I was tying her up and I stole all her credit cards. And I mean, the stories were getting cuckoo crazy. And I kind of thought, well, this is getting very alarming. I said to her, look, you're getting healthier. It's time for you to start thinking of a place and um, take care of your, you know, move, move out now. We're going to have to start that whole, you know, thing. And what happened was I, she was insisting all of a sudden on making me a cup of tea. And she had been asking me because she had been a nurse's assistant years before. And this girl actually told me stories of how she was, um, no, that I didn't learn till later, but she was, I knew she was a nurse's assistant, right? So she kept asking me questions like, oh, are you allergic to any medications? I go, yeah, Vicodin, Vicodin doesn't like me. And, you know, and uh, one morning I drove into the, into the garage and there was, I was feeling off, but I noticed the bottle, a bottle of Vicodin was tipped over on my workbench in the garage. It wasn't my Vicodin. It had her name on it. And she insisted on making me a cup of tea. She was slipping drugs into my tea. And I thought, okay, this is, this is not good. And so I, um, I think what happened next was I was getting on to her and I went to bed one night, it was late. And all of a sudden the police are in my house. They, they stormed through the house. I've got the fire department. I've got police shining flashlights running through the hallway. And I'm like, what's going on here? I've never had the police at my house. And they said, uh, we got a suicide threat. And she had been on the phone talking to a friend and threatening to kill herself. This friend called the police. And guess what? They showed up. They went through the bedroom and found a bag of medicine. They said, oh my God, there's enough meds here to kill everybody on your block. I'm like, what? They're going through her purse and all her things. I didn't go through them. They, the police are going through all her stuff and they couldn't find any ID. Well, then they found some ID and it was different ID. It, it had a different name than what I knew her as. And I'm not going to say any names because I just don't need it out there. Um, but I, I, I was like really concerned now. I'm like, I, I'm shaken at the core. I'm freaked out because I don't know who to call. I don't know what to do with an issue like this. It's never happened to me. So I did call a friend who happened to be an, a former um, spiritual friend of mine. And years ago, she, she became a private investigator. I called her and she ran a check. And she said to me, Amira, this person has a hopscotch, all kind of random background. This is very scary. She goes, I research top criminals and there's always a pattern. There's a flow. You can track them. But with this person, they're all over the place. Get her out of your house as soon as possible. So I think that's when I started to initiate the conversation. It's time for us to look for a place. And so I went down after I found the, I had found the drugs and she had done all this craziness. I went down um, to the court and filed a restraining order. And um, no, unbeknownst to me, she was filing a restraining order on me in my own house. So anyways, I can't remember all the specifics of the details. I was so incredibly stressed out. So I finally got her out of my house, okay? It was a big ordeal. I had to pay for a mover and she called the police on me and I, I made arrangements so she could be up in a hotel and have herself taken care of while you know she found an apartment because it got, that, got to that. And, and here's the deal. Um, I got a call from the police. They called me down to speak to me and they presented all these pictures 
of a woman's private parts and um, cuts around the eyes and bruises and arms bruised. They showed me these pictures and they said, first of all, it was a woman's private parts. And they said, do you know what this is? And I'm like, uh, I mean, when you're looking at those private parts of a real skinny woman, that's pretty gross. And <laughs> it was for me and all bruised up. I said, I don't know. I know it's a female. I don't know whose it is. Never seen it. Okay. Then the picture of the arm, all the bruises. And I said, well, I can tell you this person was in the hospital a few weeks ago, a month ago, and they couldn't find the vein. And that would cause a bruising and all of this puncture marks. And then the, the cut around the eye, the only thing I can see, well, there was a tongue depressor on the image. And that tongue depressor had Hall versus McGuire, her name. And I, I said, well, I can tell you this woman worked at a, cos uh, I think he was a cosmetic surgeon where she worked as a nurse. She had eye surgery and I've had the eye surgery myself. There's a little cut under a little light red scar that begins to fade over time. That is a, 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 a sign that she had cosmetic surgery. And you're only showing in the picture one half of her face. Okay. So, and, and, and that tongue depressor, it looks like underneath my name, somebody had erased the previous name and then wrote Hall on it, like on an old Polaroid picture or something. That's exactly what happened. So I said to them that that's not me. This picture has been altered and that, that person had a, a cosmetic surgery because she was accusing me of abuse, rape, um, I think it's called conversion or something where I stole all her credit cards and maxed them all out and kidnapping and, and all of the, there were, there were so many things. I'm like, this is hysterical. This is absolute rape. Imagine rape. Oh my God, I'm getting my fire all right cranked up now. Um, lo and behold, a couple of weeks later, this person found an ambulance chasing attorney and they filed 60 charges against me in the court of law. And I had trouble finding a lawyer because they could all smell this crazy person practically. They're like, this is a not so case. We're not taking this case. I finally found a lawyer who happened to be a former criminal defense lawyer for 20 years. And she graciously um, took the case for me. The beautiful sign and the, the reason, I, I don't know why she took my case, but she, as a hobby, would release white doves at weddings. That's what this woman did on the side. So she was an incredible support, but she would go to court for me. I never once went to court. I couldn't handle it. And this girl that was filing all these charges with me, she was... She was confronting the judges. She was making friends with the bailiff. She was going against all the court rules. She was calling my lawyer and threatening her. She did all these cuckoo crazy stuff. And what we found out is this girl had filed like charges like this to four other counselors or therapists like individuals like myself. So she was a serial scammer looking for people of my profile with no man in my life at the time, and, and I owned my own house, she was looking to move in or take the house or do whatever she could to get maximize her, 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 you know, use of me. So all of that to say, I learned a really big lesson. I thought this crazy person was going to come and burn down my house. That's how cuckoo she, she was. And how crazy the situation was. I went and stayed for two weeks in a friend's um, guest house. Okay. My friends were scared for me. And this, this lasted, this energy, this unsettled um, trauma that I experienced from this probably held, held me down for a good two years. When I would book a conference or a speaking engagement or a live event, she'd call the event creators, producers, and told them that I was up for murder charges. You know, and one guy called me from Salt Lake City and he goes, Amira, this is just crazy. This is laughable. Of course, we laughed when she told us that. 
she went around San Diego and all the the um metaphysical bookstores and all of the all of my connections she called them and told them who that this is who I was and many of them believed her because they right because they didn't so I had too many cases of that but Amir first of all yeah goodness, so so I'm sharing this vulnerable moment and this drama trauma situation that me as a therapist and a healer and somebody that is in my heart to do good for people learning boundaries is key and critical learning to see where is my role in this taking personal responsibility it's not her fault it's a mirror that has to look you know you point to a finger at someone there's three pointing back right so i i had some deep healing I had some clearing to do, massive clearing, right? That got my attention. That seriously got my attention. So it, I don't uh, regret it, but I won't be doing that again. <laughs> uh, and, and and again, now 2006, you said, right? You didn't have, you know, yes, the internet was really, you know, there was some things, but, you know, you weren't the detective mind. Like the first thing, you, the criminal defense, the former criminal defense attorney for you did is she checked the record. But a lot of people don't stop. They just listen to face value of what someone says. Yes. And, you, and she was able to see, hey, there's a pattern with this person. But, you you know, there's wealth of information. I, I My heart is, I cannot believe how long that took and also to, for her still to be in the same town so you know wow well, that is, and and guess yeah, what wow. in 2010 i think that was an underlying sort of unconscious motivation i didn't i it wasn't at the forefront of my mind when i left san diego and went to dubai i want to get as far away from that whole experience and memory i think the 20 2009 the whole economic thing that was the story i told myself but i think See, and I didn't understand any of this till 2013 because I was planning a trip or 2012, I was planning a trip back to Canada and the States to visit some friends. And I got a message from a friend who found out she passed away. And oh. honestly, when I got that news for a whole month, I could feel tingling in my body. I could feel like a cellular release, almost like it was karma or there was past life interference or like many lifetimes where perhaps I needed to learn this lesson. I don't know exactly, but I felt it for a month. That wow. was how huge it was for me. So believe me, I get it. I get it when we're traumatized, when we, we have these massive lessons, they aren't fun. And did I cry? Did I, was I scared? You bet I was. And did I know these tools? You bet I was. I was knocked out so far. I couldn't get myself back. I needed help to get myself back. So, you know, that's, that's what happens is we are human. We need each other. And, and in teaching you this tools, you can help yourself and you can help other people. I can't. I yeah, I really hope a lot of people listen to this because I'm sure everyone can identify with a family member or a friend. This was a woman who reached out to you and you were doing a simple gesture. Now, you know, that uh, I, I did something similar where I took in someone who was just about homeless and I was able and I was told, get this, that you can't if that person has their toothbrush in your bathroom. Like, let's just they're saying a couple of nights, you can't throw them out because they can say, no, I'm living here. So yes, the complexities and, and not being aware of that and just thinking, oh, I'm just going to help this person out. Yes, I learned that lesson on a much, much so smaller scale on a, a couple of times, you know, and yeah. I, love, I love the idea. So your, your advice would be, right? The, so the, if the, I could do it over again, yeah. I would, I would continue doing what I do from a distance. Right. I think that's one of the reasons why I prefer to do everything remote. And that, I mean, I started doing remote in 2000. I, I didn't uh, see person in people in person. I didn't really want, because, because seeing the truth and telling and telling people some big things in their life, sometimes they have a partner or somebody in their life that's not going to like it. Right. So mm -hmm. I didn't want to open my space up to being vulnerable in that way. I mean, the world has gotten really, crazy since then even more but um I, I'm not here to hide let's just say that but I am here to be aware of our you know 
potential exposure and how that could affect us. I would do it remotely. I -hmm. would look more like, again, giving her the advice, you know, to, to get the soup, to, to make the soup. Maybe I could send a courier with some soup. Maybe, maybe I could have sent a driver, right? Mm -hmm. Um, that would be another way to do that. I know when I was in the Middle East, I got used to that drivers delivering things, right? (laughs) Or an Uber, right? Now we've got that. We could do it that way. So that would be some ways that could be, you know, prudent. You can still give. I don't, I don't, um, want to minimize that, but learning our boundaries, learning our boundaries and putting yourself first. How much does that deplete you? I love, I love also what I heard, and this goes back to when I was helping, uh, first of all, you mentioned the community and helping your neighbors. Um, when my children were in elementary school, there was, you know, there was a lot of families we gave, um, we were secret Santas and we were giving to students anonymously, but one, one uh, family, for instance, she goes, my husband doesn't want to take the money, their house is burned. I said, but remember, if we were in a small rural community of farmers and the farm burns down, we would all get together and help rebuild Absolutely. it. And Absolutely. That, that was a simplified thing. Now, I went to the counselor because, you know, they were in, uh, in such a tough situation after the house burned down. And I said to the counselor, you know, how do you deal with this when you have, you know, this many families or even this one family? She goes, you learn to help them cope. You ask them how they're coping and get this. And you just said it. You give them the tools. You empower them with the tool. So for instance, when I went on Facebook and I, I did this alert, you know, that can spread. And I asked, please share. And then also I did go to Florida Fish and Wildlife and got the link so there wouldn't be this fear, but it's like, hey, we're starting to coexist with animals, bears and bobcats and raccoons have learned to coexist with us. We need to learn to coexist with them. I love this message and this, the way that it's boiled down. Yes, you can help, but empower them to help themselves. And And you know, you brought something to my mind when you're talking about the counselor is in my, on my path. I've witnessed a lot of psychics, healers, teachers, counselors, social workers. And for all of you who are listening, and this is an issue, I notice that they gain weight, a lot of weight. And they might even struggle losing that weight or maybe not wanting it or maybe just surrendering to it. It just is. But here's the thing. It's not healthy. And that doesn't make you energized. It doesn't make you, when we're carrying excess weight, I know for myself, with 10 extra pounds, it makes a huge difference. 10, 20, 30, 40 pounds, oh my God, we can't focus. We don't have the energy. We don't do the things that we love to do, right? And we we hide ourselves because we don't feel good about ourselves. But ultimately, what this is telling me is that you've got foreign energy that's not allowing you to be in alignment with yourself. All of that. So let's see if I could back this up a little bit. Those negative decisions or other people's foreign energy, the kids, like you're loving the kids as a teacher or as a counselor, whoever you're working with, if you're not able to release their energy back to them in throughout your day, whether it's a client, like every single client I work with, I give them their energy back. Well, how do I do that? I literally have two tools or two images in my mind. One is like a folder of for Amira, one is folder for them. And I drag and drop all their energy from my folder back into their folder. And I do the reverse for mine. I reclaim my energy. I give them their energy back. Okay. That is a healing for them. It improves and increases our connection, our relationship. And it doesn't deplete me. So there's a lot of boxes we're checking when we do that, right? And it's it's a practice that none of us have been taught. None of us have been taught how to have our own energy and clear for an energy that's not ours. Why? Because it's like a malware or a virus in our system, our energy system. And so when we can learn that, integrate that, practice that, be consistent with it, then you will start being able to get on top of your weight challenges, other health challenges, 
um, because it affects body, mind, and spirit. So I know that wasn't asked oh, for, but there we go. And to your point, the counselor who told me that had a beautiful af you know, life after school as a counselor. She, she looked gorgeous. She was taking care of herself. She had her family, her kids, her big, and you know what? So she really had boundaries. She knew priorities yeah. and, and she, she was firm with them. And she said, you, what you do, Karen, is you help that you ask them how they're coping. And then you give them the tools to go to that organization in town. And also you're right in the nonprofit charitable world. Oh, the women, I would look at the women and go, they're working themselves to death, helping others. So you're right. You, you do it, see. it just breaks my heart because not only do I see all of these other imbalances and the struggles within their physical body, you know, there's a domino effect, right? One thing leads to another, to another, to an, oh, I need medication for the high blood pressure. Oh, I can't sleep at night. I need sleep aids. I'm, I'm so anxious all the time. So I'm grabbing food because I can't even think about what's next. I'm so busy. I'm so overwhelmed. And so there's a domino effect, all those small bad decisions that I talked about in our opening, right? They start clumping all together and creating all these other things. Then the relationship goes bad because you're just so depleted. You're just like, oh God, I can't even talk to them right now. I can't deal with one more problem, you know? Yeah, and I love that we circle back to the little things because people get overwhelmed, um, you know, uh, and, and also if they tell themselves, well, I can't eat chocolate, well, the brain just sees that visual of chocolate. And like, I, you know, I have learned this in my old age, but the little things, don't overwhelm yourself with these big goals. No, no, the little things will take it off. The little corrections, uh, you were talking about that earlier too. So I love how you brought that full circle back of uh and then focus on just like you put that on the Facebook page, just focus on now and today, the goal today. <laughs> focus well on you. What is most important to you, your priorities, take it in the first step that you're in that priority, you know, um, minimize. I mean, I'm all for making a list of all your goals. Those are all things that you want to strive for, but you can't do them all at once. You can't go to a buffet and eat the whole buffet. You know, you got to start somewhere. You know, some people decide to start at the salad. Some people start at the dessert, you know. So, um, yeah. So welcome, Marie Pierre. Did you have anything that you wanted to add to share or comment or question for me? I'd like to know about um, about how she's doing. Oh, she's, she's muted for some reason. You've got to unmute, honey. How's your project going? You're clearing. Oh, clearing is still happening and better yet. I was grumpy because you told me I needed to accept help. So I didn't show up for a few days. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, you know, it's, it's on you. It's not on me, you know, so I, I'm okay with that. How about that? I'm okay because guess what? I go through the same shit. I get okay. grumpy too. And I get pissed off when people don't want to hear what I have to say. And then, you know what? I go, well, I did my best. And now I got to pull my energy back and let them have their process. And hopefully to God, she'll see the light and we can come back together and say, I'm sorry I hurt your feelings, but I really- No, you didn't hurt my feelings. I hurt my own. <laughs> yeah. You know? So anyway, um, I started listening to podcasts. I figured that was part of receiving. Listening to podcasts on how to be better the online business with Etsy. Good. And um, so there's things I know I have to do and I, there, I've made lists. So, uh, so I would just say, put those things on a list because you're going to be triggered. Right, okay, great, great, great. I did the list. And I've decided um, like a marketing campaign to start a 30 day challenge but I'm, I'm not going to start it till October and I'm kind of cheating in a way because it's 30 coats in 30 days. But basically it's show off one coat every day for 30 days in October. Okay. And That's a great start. goal, by the way. I love it. And I love that you're getting more clear and you're really more present. You're grounded today. You're like, okay, I can receive this. And you know, those ideas by listening to the podcast, you're going to get other ideas. What a great idea. Oh my God, of course I can do right. that. No, you can't do it all at once. 
Okay, another thing that I've done, well, this is three days, right? I haven't shown up for three days or something or two or three. So another thing that I've done is I started asking, you know, for search engine optimization, I started asking friends if they were to look for a men's coat like I make, what would be the words they would enter in the search box? Mm -hmm. So I'm getting some, I got one response, but there's some other people I know who might do responses. Okay, I have an idea for you. They're pushing is video. So I have a neighbor who won Emmys for Oakland Oakland, um, News Station. Um, who knows how to edit video and whatnot. So I'm thinking, okay, get a tripod for the phone, start doing videos, and then um, work with Abby. She can direct me to what I should be focusing on more. So, okay, I got some more help coming. Great, up. awesome. But there's a night, there's a service called Fiverr, F I V E R R.com. That's right. Okay. On my and list. you can find somebody that will do, I think I paid $10 for a search for a thousand search words. Oh, SEO. For, oh yeah. For SEO. Yeah. Okay. SEO. So you can get somebody to do SEO for Etsy, let's say. Right. And for your product, give them the parameters. They'll ask you for the basics. You know, you've got this coat, you've got this and let them do the work for you for five or 10 bucks. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, I'll do You that. know what I mean? And the same thing with um, the video, you could just shoot the video and there's people that will do the editing and well, prepare it like for- And Abby too, yeah. Well, yeah, and, and I mean, let's see, maybe she's gonna, or maybe you can make a trade. I don't know, but um, just ideas, you know, she's five retired. or maybe, huh? She's retired and she loves projects. Okay, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> there you go. You've got your team that you're building. Yeah, I'm building a team. Good girl. Then, okay, I don't know if that affected it or what, just that little opening. But yesterday I woke up to a $400 sale. <laughs> I love <laughs> it. I love it. Here's to you. That's amazing. Fantastic. One person bought two items. And see, see listen, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to tell you, sorry. Energetically, you shifted. You said. I'm willing to do something different. And you, even though you had the resistance that I talked about earlier, you allowed that I'm pissed off. I piss a lot of people off because it, it feels yucky. It, that resistance is like, rah, 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 I want to be right. Truth right? hurts. Truth well, hurts. <laughs> it doesn't have to. We can choose to just let it go too. And, and that process is what you're describing is happened. And the universe said, Yahoo, we support you, sister, and validated the steps you took. So right. you can take more. See, when you're making more, you can get this, or you say, universe, I need support. You took the step to receiving the support and they brought more money so you can pay for more things. Right. Just getting that support. Mm -hmm. Yep. And bring your message and your beautiful, handcrafted, beautiful Renaissance coats to the world. Exactly. exactly. Congratulations. I think that's excellent. So yeah, that was fun. And I was excited because it was the first ladies coat I sell online that was not a custom order. These were already See, made. So that's part of your goal, right? To sell more stuff that you've already got because you need cash flow immediate, exactly. well, right? You don't want to keep well. doing custom things and, and fill up your, your whole production line gets snap, you know, jammed up. Yes and no, because it doesn't take too long to make um, an item. Like a corset, it's only four hours. And I have, I'm just waiting for measurements. But, but, but okay, yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt. That's your story. Yeah. yeah okay. Ask yourself, what's the end result? Mm -hmm. I want more cash flow. So I need to, I need to have products that will just go out the door. Right. versus taking in new special onesies you want so to sell six coats to somebody that are already finished that, right. that's the mindset difference that's like do you want to be the, the 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 single you know dressmaker or do you want to be the business person putting right. on that next step hat well at the end of august i was depleted of inventory of my men's coats because my guy in new york he took whatever i had left 
and I now have a store and that's a good problem. That's a good problem. It's great. great. (laughs) And um, there's a store in Haight Ashbury who buys wholesale from me now. He took 10. I'm waiting for the next order, but I need to be ready for another 10. So yeah. Good job. So I'm here to support you in taking more steps to receiving. Keep doing the practices, okay? Because all those little exercises you're doing are moving that unconscious stuff, that fear of being successful, that fear of being out there, that fear of, you know, making some tough decisions sometimes, mm-hmm. you know, of being seen. And God knows a lot of people are afraid of success. We've got this story of impo- of being you know, of poverty, of scarcity, of, well, this is the way all our family was, or, you know, if I'm this, then that means I'm going to be, you know, rich people are greedy, or rich people are, you know, whatever you want to fill in the blank, we make those decisions. So I always say, the more money you make, the more money you have to support people that are working for you and building this dream. And I am excited about the results of what I've made the last five posts. (laughs) Whereas I wasn't before. Now I'm excited about it. So you're 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 getting into your flow, mm-hmm. your your enthusiasm. You know the 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 word enthusiasm, the Latin base of it is full of God. Right. Enthuse, yes. It means to be full of God. That's a sign you're coming into alignment. Manifestation. Yeah. Orders from the universe is an indicator. That's awesome. I'm so happy. Yeah, I keep thinking about that gauge. I keep thinking about that gauge. Are you ready to receive? And how I was doubting. I was saying I was at 100%, but really I wasn't because right. And so you know, we lie to ourselves. (laughs) I I I remember all the implications that it brings with it. But now I know what that gauge means. And so now I keep thinking because, you know, when you're sewing, it's kind of a meditative thing when you don't have the radio going or whatever, right? So um, I keep So I just want to add something to that. So make your goals or your dreams like an adult, like, okay, I could do this and this, or I'd like this, but we receive like a kid or like a child. So that's why I often say in the training is, you know, pretend you're in kindergarten, like we're just making this up. Okay. And so when I told one student and we were long distance, so I remember saying no cheating and they were offended because they, they thought I was calling them a cheater, but we all do that. We trick ourselves. We want it to be a hundred percent, but it's really 47 and a half, you know? (laughs) And so it's like, doesn't matter. I always say it's just a number and just clear it off. Like we're in kindergarten, doesn't matter. Clean it off, bring it to a hundred. There's some days like early this morning, I, mine was probably at 20, you know, I was just like, I don't want to go to walk. I don't want, but then I went, no, clean that off. After a while, it becomes an automatic uh, tool in your consciousness where you can do it really quick or Sometimes you just bypass it, go, no, I'm going to that. That's where, you know, most therapists or psychoanalysts will just talk about being decisive. This is what we're doing to help ourselves get decisive and be inspired, right? You got the idea to listen to podcasts. That's new. That's different. Oh, I did before, but I hadn't in a long time. And there's this one woman she's really fair you know i mean and she she really studies the question about of everything on etsy and she's she's really good her good for you anybody you know it's on etsy and needs help it's called um the podcast is called cricket to chechings oh that's lovely i love it and you're chinging you're you're doing the you're doing it crickets to ching so good job i missed the cha-ching yesterday because it was at five o'clock in the morning and the phones were off but <laughs> that's fine cha-ching every single day bring up that receiving gauge cha-ching cha-ching maybe you know i had a student bless her heart she's in with ha- with god right now but she's in my class she would move the um 
when she would explode roses or clean things off, she'd go boom, 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 boom. <laughs> in the <laughs> slide. So it made it real for her. So maybe when you clean off your gauge, this is for you, Laura, go cha-ching, cha-ching, make a sound, a casino sound or something that gets you, you know, yeah. in that playful yes. mood. Because when we get playful, when we're amused, it's actually a high vibration. It's a, a, a God vibration, mm -hmm. right? It's that thing that allows the energy to flow and have fun. Yeah, my granddaughter, um, four years old, three years old. Yeah, about three and a half, four. She heard my phone do cha-ching and she looked at me. She goes, Grandma, cha-ching, that means money. <laughs> Well, on that note, I love it. Thank you for sharing that because that's what we're all about. I mean, it's not all about money, but it's all about abundance. So let's, uh, let's have a, you know, high five to cha-ching. <laughs> <laughs> have a great day, ladies. I'll see you tomorrow if, if that works for you. Um, yeah, if I wake up on Have time, a magical, have a magical day. Okay. Bye. Take care.